coming out to Morris Island with me. That's usually a pretty good chance of finding teeth. We all come back with a nice solid handful. I enjoy going out, being able to take people out, seeing the excitement, not only on the kids' faces, but yeah, bringing the parents out that, and seeing like their eyes light up just as much as their kids, if not more. Like we as uh, paleontologists, we're just kind of kids that never grew out of our dinosaur phase. We love exposing people that may have like lost that spark, that may have lost that interest to something like this. Like something as simple as a shark tooth could be enough to kind of get people really interested and back into their love of fossils and nature and things. Love that part of this job. If you're looking for shark teeth on the beaches down here, one of the like, I guess, best indicators that you're in the right spot tends to be these little black rocks. They're these little, uh, what are called phosphate nodules, these little pebbles, right? So those black nodules come from those same layers originally that all these teeth came from. You'll hear a lot of people talk about these look for black triangles and there is some truth to that, but you'll notice on any of these teeth, you have that dark black coloration, but then there's a separate color to the actual enamel. And then like, I guess, recognize that line, that's almost better than any of these the triangle shapes, these dark triangles. Be able to pick that out as well as the dark triangles as well as finding those little phosphate nodules. That's what'll uh, definitely help. But you also notice those serrations on either side as well. And those serrations can tell us a lot about things like the diet, sort of the lifestyle of these sharks. So that those serrations tell us that they were feeding on prey that were either equal to or larger than their own size. So they would use those serrations to cut big chunks out of whatever they were whatever they were hunting at the time. Whereas you find species like mako or sand tiger sharks, which have very long pointy teeth. They were made to kind of uh, grasp much smaller prey, things that were a lot more fast moving. Uh, the most popular one tends to be uh, Carcharicles orototus megalodon. That's uh, usually what everyone is coming down here to search for. They are very distinct. You'll see serrations on either side, very even serrations all along the edge of that tooth. And like I mentioned earlier, those serrations are very, uh, they're very indicative of that. Like they're hunting these very large prey, right? Teeth are very important for this like paleontological record to understand kind of the things that lived before humans. And coming out to Morris, we can go out there for like three, four hours, go hunt for some shark teeth. And guarantee we're all gonna come back with a nice solid handful. Uh, some of the most pristine teeth I've found in Charleston for sure, it's definitely one of the best spots that I've been to. Come on out with me and we'll, we'll hunt us down some shark teeth.